Hey, Monty, hope you're doing well. Uh, obviously, a lot different out there from the secondary standpoint, you know, with, with the Dory gone, Malcolm gone, Kenny gone. How much does that put on you to, to uh, kind of assert yourself even more and how you think things have been going with the kind of new group so far? Uh, things have been going great. Um, you know, like you said, guys from last year are missing or are gone. And, um, you know, we got some guys in there that um, we can learn a lot. You know, OTA is an opportunity for guys to step in. And, you know, right now, guys are just learning the playbook, learning the details and techniques and, and just trying to improve as a whole secondary. Teresa. Amani, how important is it for you to be here during these OTAs? They're voluntary. Some guys uh, weren't there today. Uh, what is it that you're hoping to get out of these sessions, particularly with so many new faces and young faces at that? Um, getting back into the flow of things, you know, getting back around the guys, around the coaches, um, around the teammates, you know, having that communication, you know, building that trust and, you know, making sure that when we come in to work, you know, I'm coming in just making sure I'm helping lead guys and, you know, guys that haven't been here before, making sure that they know, you know, how we practice and how we meet and how we move about in the building. Corey Curtis. Yeah, Amani, why was it important for you to be there? Um, I mean, there weren't many veterans there. Why was it important for you? Um, for me, you know, just to get a lot of new guys coming in. You know, um, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I was here around the um, coaching staff, you know, here around the players, um, you know, just making sure that, you know, like, like for me, I feel like I just, for me, I just like being here. You know, I like being around the guys. I like being around the teammates, um, you know, and having a great week. Terry. Amani, how much did the fact that you're in line to be a starting safety this year play a, a role in your decision to uh, show up for the OTAs? Um, you know, every year it's competing. I mean, there's no, you know, like I said, there's nothing guaranteed. So, you know, I got to come in and make sure that you know, I'm doing my stuff on my end, um, making sure that I'm helping the guys around me because they're going to help push me, um, vice versa. So, you know, for me, it was just come in and just improve as a player and just keep getting better. Did you communicate with some of the other guys and know that maybe some of the other vets weren't going to be here uh, today? Oh, yeah. You know, we had we had communication you know, before about who's going to be here and who's not going to be here. Um, you know, and as a secondary, as a team, we all respect everyone's decision. Everyone's a pro. So we know that the guys that are away from here are going to be you know, doing what they got to do. So when they come back, they're going to be ready just to fit in like a puzzle piece. Dan Beauclair. Monty, what was your sort of immediate reaction when Kenny Vaccaro was cut, you know, knowing, A, that you're losing a teammate, but also what it meant for you from an opportunity standpoint? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sucks seeing Kenny leave. You know, I've, I've been with him my rookie year. Um, for me, he's a great mentor. You know, he taught me a lot, you know, a lot of stuff as far as coverage, you know, blitzing, run game and all that stuff. You know, I appreciate Kenny a lot. And, you know, for me, I was, I was excited for opportunity to, you know, come in and compete. Um, you know, when he was here, I was competing, and just because he's gone, you know, my, my competing's not going to stop. Teron? To that point, Monty, not just for this whole year, how much does being elevated to that starting role change a responsibility level for you and just a, an approach? I'm sorry, you're kind of breaking up. Sorry about that. I, I was saying not just today, but for this full year. Role, how much does that change, like a level of responsibility or, or just to, to become more of a leader on this team for you? Yeah, definitely. You know, I've been here for, you know, two years, going on my third year. So, you know, I know what the coaches are looking for. You know, I have a good feel for what, you know, the techniques that they're asking for. And for me, you know, just as um, a guy that's been here for a while, making sure that guys that haven't been here, you know, can learn those things. I can help them, you know, teach them those things or help guide them and help them, you know, teach them stuff that, you know, Kenny taught me and KV have taught me when I was coming in or when I was new here. Luke? Monty, a word we heard a lot from you all last season was communication at all levels of the defense. What is being done on the field and in the meeting room to make sure that that's a better, at a better level this year? Um, just both ends, you know, both sides. It's not just the safeties communicating, but the you know corners as well, and all across the board. You know, we just want to make sure everyone can be on the same page. Um, we want guys not just to know what they're doing, but to know what the guy next to them is doing. Um, that way, it can help both parties. You know, if someone doesn't know what they're doing, and the guy next to you does, they can help them out. So we're not we're not independent contractors. But we're all just you know working together as one team. You, you haven't been on the field all together yet, but have you uh, been able to communicate with some of the new members of the secondary, like? Jenkins and, and Farley and some of those guys? 
Yep. You know, we have, you know, Farley's here. You know, we got guys that are here um, that are around the building, you know, guys that we're, we're talking to, chatting with. Um, so we're in communication with, you know, a lot, everyone in the DB group, making sure that we, st we still have that um, camaraderie before the guys, before everyone comes in here. Couple more for Imani. Corey Curtis. Hey, Imani, uh, of course, it's been a while since we've seen you. Um, you look thinner. Are you lighter or are you leaner or what, what's going on? I was a couple pounds lighter. You know, I just, just slimmed down a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling good. Uh, why? Uh, no, just for me, it was just, you know, in, improve my speed, you know, improve my agility. Um, you know, I still have, you know, for me, I still think I'm strong. You know, I have enough, I have enough strength. But uh, for me, it was just, you know, making sure I can be able to move and run around with these, you know, this fast offensive, offensive league and fast offensive guys. Teresa. Monty, with all the new faces, uh, there's so many changes on defense. Uh, does it feel like a bit of a message may have been sent that, you know, last year, yes, we won the AFC South, but, you know, this unit's got to get better as a whole? Uh, yeah, every year, you know, every year we want to improve. You know, the goal isn't just to win the AFC South. The goal is to win the Super Bowl. Um, so, you know, the coaches are going to do, you know, what they got to do to help, you know, help us win, help the team improve. And, you know, we trust them. And, you know, who, whoever they bring in, we're going to trust them as well. Ben Arthur. Hey, um, uh, Amani, uh, Shane Bowen was, you know, formally promoted to DC um, this offseason. I guess in, in what ways does, I guess, maybe having more internal clarity on his role help you guys? And then just what are you excited to um, just to, to see from him this year after, you know, obviously the, the struggles in, in 2020? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, you know, happy for Shane, excited for Shane. Um, for me, I've, I've known Shane since I've been here as a rookie. So, um, yeah, I know I we trust him. You know, he knows what he's doing. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be really good on defense this year. We're going to make sure that we're on top of things and uh, we trust him and our philosophy on defense. Last question, Jim Wyatt. And Amani, you touched on Caleb a little bit, but, but Caleb and, and Elijah Molden specifically, what, what advice would you give a couple of young guys just heading into the league? Um, you know, get your head in the playbook. You know, the faster you can learn the playbook, um, the, the things will start slowing down on the field. You know, when you don't know the playbook, you know, things that might seem like it's moving too fast. Um, but, you know, make sure you know what you're doing. Things will start slowing down, and then it'll, it'll start getting easier from there. I missed just one. Sorry, Monty. Teron? Sorry about that. Uh, you mentioned how Vicarl and Byer were mentors for you. You being a, a mentor for a guy like Molden, who's going to be in a similar situation, uh, what are some of the things you've been able to pick up from him just as far as like how he could pick up the game and his knowledge of the game already? Yeah, smart kid. Um, you know, I watched, I watched his highlights. I remember watching him play um, during the college, college when he was back in college. He was making plays, you know, all over the place. You could tell he's an instinctive player, you know, similar to, you know, how I was playing. Um, but, yeah, you know, he, he's nice. I've seen his film. Um, you know, haven't seen him on the field yet, but, you know, I definitely like what we've seen from him as far as, you know, IQ and knowing the game.